Hello, Red and Panic here, and today I would like to show you how to build a vanilla subgrid wheel control system. In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up the forward and reverse driving controls, steering controls, and even braking controls, all without having to rely on the use of scripts. In order to build this control system, we are going to need a few blocks, including some event controllers, remote controls, thrusters, and the light. So first of all, we need to build a rover and its subgrid wheels. Here is a basic design for the purposes of this tutorial. It has two sets of suspension blocks attached to a rotor on both sides and at both ends. The rotors have been set up with some basic limits and torque settings, but these will depend entirely on your specific rover design. It is important to note that when suspension blocks are not directly connected to a grid with a control block, they will all act at the same default behaviour regardless of their orientation. So for all of our wheels on the right hand side we need to set invert propulsion on. This way they will all drive in the correct direction when we set up the drive controls later on. We also need to do something similar to our rear wheels in order to be able to turn correctly. So for all of our rear wheels we will set invert steering on. And now that we've made those little tweaks to the suspensions, we can move on to setting up the controls. As you can see, I cannot control any of these wheels from the control seat because they are separated by the subgrids. So we need to build something that can control them for us. For this, we will use a few event controllers and some thrusters to trigger them with the control inputs. As with my other tutorials, you can use any kind of thrusters that you prefer. In this tutorial, I have used ion thrusters as they provide minimal additional thrust in atmosphere. The first two event controllers we will place will be for our forward and reverse controls, and we will name them Drive Forward and Drive Reverse. Then we will place a pair of thrusters, one facing forward and one facing backward, and we will name them Drive Thruster Forward and Drive Thruster Reverse. And now we can hop back into our control seat and set up some controls. First we will need to make a group for all of our suspension blocks as it will make the programming much more straightforward. Then we can go to our drive event controllers and we will set both of them to detect thruster output. We will set both of them to trigger on the greater than event and we will set them both to trigger at 10%. For the Drive Forward controller, we will select the Drive Forward Thruster in the Selected Blocks menu. And for the Drive Reverse controller, we will select the Drive Reverse Thruster. Now we can go to the Select Actions menu of our Drive Forward controller. And as a little failsafe to prevent conflict, we will turn the Reverse controller off in the first slot and on in the second slot. This will deactivate the reverse controls when we are driving forward and reactivate them when we release the controls to prevent us from accidentally activating both at the same time. Then on the second page in the first slot we can select our suspension group, use the set propulsion override action and set it to 100%. And in the second slot, we can either set it to 0% or use the reset propulsion override action. And now we can go to our drive reverse controller and do the same thing. So we'll go to our select actions menu. And first of all, we'll select our drive forward controller and turn it off in the first slot and on in the second slot. Then on the second page, we can once again select our suspension group, choose the set proportion override action and set it to minus 100% in the first slot. And in the second slot, we can again choose either Set Proportion Override to 0% or Reset Proportion. Now we can drive our rover forwards and backwards using the thrusters to trigger the suspension blocks, but we also need to be able to turn. So we can build a few more event controllers and name them Steer Left and Steer Right. And we can build a few more thrusters, which we will name Steer Thruster Left and Steer Thruster Right. And now we can hop back into the control seat again and set up the steering controls. So first of all, we will go to our steering controllers, and just like our drive controllers, we will set them both to thruster output, 
greater than 10% and we will select our left steering thruster for our left steering controller and we will select the right steering thruster for the right steering controller. Then we can go to the select actions menu on our left controller and on the first page as a fail safe we will select our steer right controller and in the first slot we will turn it off and in the second slot we will turn it back on again. Then on the second page we will once again select our suspension group. We will choose the set steer override action and set it to minus 100% in the first slot and 0% or reset steer override in the second slot. And now we can do the same thing for our steer right controller. So we will again go to the select actions menu and on the first page we will set our steer left controller to turn off and on. And on the second page we will once again select our suspension group. We will choose the set steer override action and set it to 100% in the first slot and either 0% or reset steering override in the second slot. And now we have a subgrid rover that can drive forwards and backwards and steer left and right. But we need to be able to brake so that we can slow down or stop in case of emergencies. So the next thing that we need to do is create some sort of way of controlling the brakes on the suspensions. If we go to the action menu we can see that we don't have an option for turning the brakes on and off directly using the suspension blocks themselves. But we can get something else to control the brakes for us. So, if we add a remote control block to each of our subgrids, we can use them to control the brakes for us as they have the actions for turning the brakes on and off. And we will rename them Brake Control and create a group for them to make the programming a little bit easier. Next, we will build another pair of event controllers and we will name one Brake On and Off and we will name the other Brake Control. We will also need to build a vertical thruster so that we can use the same button that we would normally use for the brakes, which we will name Brake Thruster Control. And finally, we also need to build a light to act as a handbrake switch, which we will name Brake Light and we will make sure it is switched off first as we want off to be its default state. And now that we have all of those pieces in place, we can once again pop back into our control seat and set up the brake controls. First we need to go to our brake on off event controller which will act as our main brake control and set the event to block switched on and off. And then in the available blocks menu we will select our brake light as the trigger. And then we can go to the select actions menu and choose the brake control group. As you can see we only have single actions for brake on off rather than separate on and off actions and event controllers won't allow us to place two of the same action on the same page. So, in order to get around this, we can place the handbrake on off action in the first slot of the first page, and then we can place the same action in the second slot of the second page. This way, we can get the action to trigger in both states of the event controller. So, now if we turn the brake light on, it activates the brake on the suspension blocks, and if we turn the brake light off again, it deactivates the brakes. This will work great as a parking brake when we want to stop and get out, but we need to be able to use the brake effectively whilst driving. So, we will go to the last of our event controllers, which we named Brake Control, and we will set it to Detect Thruster Output. And again, like the Drive and Steering controllers, we will set it to greater than 10% and we will select our brake control thruster as the trigger. And then we will go to the select action menu one last time. And then we will quite simply set the brake light to turn on in the first slot and off in the second slot. This now allows us to activate the brake using the vertical thruster. When we use the up input, it turns the brake light on, which triggers the brake controls and when we release the up input, it turns the brake light off again, 
and turns the brakes off too. And now we just need to cut our new rover down so we can give it a test. And one final thing we need to do before we can truly test it properly is we need to turn the inertial dampeners off. This is to prevent the inertial dampening kicking in as we're driving around and accidentally triggering our input controls. So that has been my tutorial on building scriptless subgrid wheel control systems. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.